Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started with this afternoon's webinar. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're going to learn about library resources for workforce development in your area. My name is Charlie Taylor. I'm one of the CE consultants here at KDLA. Hi, everybody. I'll be uh, kind of keeping track in the background of what's going on, helping out with any technical issues you might have. Um, so if you have any issues with the sound or the slides or anything, please just submit uh, something in the chat, and I'll do my best to help you out. If you do have any sound issues, the first thing we always recommend is going up to meeting in the top left-hand corner and running the audio setup wizard. That will usually take care of your issues. But we don't anticipate any <laughs> today, of course. Um, at, you will be receiving a certificate of attendance for being here in the live webinar. I'll be getting that out in an email um, within a week, for sure. Uh, this session is being recorded, and it will be posted on our archived webinars page within, again, within a week, but probably sooner than that. Um, so you can go back and review it or share it with any of your colleagues, your, your staff, anything you'd like to do. And I believe that's it. I'm going to go ahead and change the screen over. It looks like I wanted to address the poll again real quick before we get started. It looks like it, we got kind of a tie between some people are doing things and some people aren't. So that's great. So we got some people who are active and some, some folks who need to learn some new stuff. That's what we're all here for. So thank you all for being with us. I'm going to go ahead and change the screen over. Okay, go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. She is Natalie Rupert. She is the Circulation Supervisor and Librarian at the Kenton County Public Library, and I heard her give this presentation originally at KPLA in the spring, and I can tell you all it was great. So I've already had a preview, and we were really excited to invite Natalie to present this again for us to get, this, get the word out about this really important movement in Kentucky libraries. So Natalie, thank you for being with us, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Awesome, Charlie. Um, very nice to see everybody and talk to everybody. Before we get started real quick, Charlie, I just have a quick question for you. Down sure. in the bottom left of my screen, I cannot see the little buttons to make the li slides move forward. I Any? got this. Me, I, I'll, I'll fix that for you. Um. OK. And as you're doing that, I'll give everybody a little bit of a background. Um, first of all, to tell you a little bit about myself, I have only been a librarian for eight years, and I do have a, bus a business background. I'm one of those classic career changers who really wanted to be a librarian for a long time, but wasn't given that direction as a young person, so I was really glad to join the club, um, a bit of a securitist route. So I've been able to kind of combine my business background with being a librarian to kind of um, move forward in Job Search Central workforce development resources. Um, I don't know, as Charlie said, how many of you were able to attend um, KPLA in the spring. Um, but one of the big things that happened is Terry Emanuel, who is our state librarian, if you haven't had a chance to meet him, announced a new partnership called LEAF, which stands for Library Economic Advantage Forum, which is expected to be a partnership between KDLA, basically us public libraries, Kentucky Adult Education in the Northern Kentucky Career Centers. Um, we here up in Kenton County, which is, you know, we're almost in Cincinnati area, we were kind of in a unique situation um, some years back to move forward on this type of partnership already. So I'm going to, as throughout the presentation, I'm going to be um, talking about the experiences that we have had in the past and kind of give you some ideas on where you could go. I do realize that we are doing a lot and <clears throat> I'd be happy to help anyone um, get started on their own or to have you reach out to me for resources and that kind of thing as we go forward. So first of all, Workforce development are helping patrons find jobs. We're going to talk about where have we been, what we're currently doing, and where we could go in the future, as in the Library Economic Advantage Forum. In the past, 
everybody knows that we managed the digital divide by connecting patrons with technology. It's hard to believe in this day and age that years ago, the digital divide was basically between people who couldn't afford to buy a computer, uh, let alone a cell phone, um, and those that could. So libraries filled that void by buying computers and having people come and visit us to use our technology. We taught people how to use the internet. We taught people how to search online. So many people were clueless, you know, 15, 20 years ago. It's really not that long ago at all. We also all offered computer classes to help people update their skills. We offered basic job hunting classes on resumes, interviewing, and cover letters. And I realize not everybody did that, but probably most libraries in metropolitan areas at least took a stab at it. We were always, we've always been thought to be a resource for people pursuing enlightenment through reading and through books. Um, currently, um, the Kentucky Career Center has closed all but 12 locations in the state of Kentucky. And for no, those of you who's not familiar with the Kentucky Career Center, in the good old days, it used to be referred to as the unemployment office. Then it was referred to as the one stop. And now it's basically the Kentucky Career Center. And the whole focus of the center has changed. Um, our computers are often sitting idle as pe people are using personal technology, whether it's laptops, iPads, and their cell phones. And the digital divide has truly closed now. Pretty much everyone has a cell phone. Job hunters, whether they're low-skilled or downsized professionals, face isolation, discrimination of many types, and this is whether they're entry-level, um, minimum wage type people, or people that have left six-figure careers. And they still have difficulty, no matter who they are, locating resources to help them. Also, companies can't find people with the skills they need today, and many jobs are sitting open, often unfulfilled. In our state, and these statistics go back to February, we have about 1,943,089 people currently working. We had about 101,030 people unemployed. In the labor rates have changed drastically in the last, you know, last 10 years, particularly since 2008 when we had tons of people coming in, into the libraries who were looking for jobs and were unemployed. Right now, in our area alone, there are six open jobs for every person looking for work. Now, granted, they're all not professional-level jobs. The bulk of them run anywhere from $10 to $14 an hour, but they are out there. Um, so how can public libraries help? This is, I'm not going to advance the slide for a few minutes. I'm just going to tell you a short story of how we got involved in helping people find jobs um, quite a few years ago. Um, and it's basically because we were in a very unique situation. I worked at our Covington branch, uh, which is basically five minutes from downtown Cincinnati and sits on the Ohio River. It's very much an urban branch. Um, we cater to a very diverse population. And um, it was our original branch that was undergoing a major renovation. Um, the contractors happened to put up like major steel fencing all around the building. So a lot of people thought the library was closed. And at the same time, the majority of our patrons coming into the building, I'd say 75% of them, were looking for jobs. Um, so we didn't have as many people to take care of because think people were thinking we were closed. A lot of our reference staff were like, I wouldn't say we were bored, but we were all looking to use our skills and like what we were going to do. And um, our branch manager at the time agreed to let us reach out into our community to see um, where we could help out. 
Um, and I met with the staff at our Kentucky Career Center and basically talked to them about where they didn't have enough staff to help. And it was basically helping um, people with first-time computer skills, helping people learn Microsoft Word, helping people with resumes, internet access, job applications, resumes, all those types of things. Um, I was, we were then basically able to go out and start some programs that go along those lines, and the rest is sort of history. Um, so what I suggest you do in your area, if you're able to do this, is contact the closest Kentucky Career Center to you. The regional offices are now in Bowling Green, Covington, Elizabethtown, Hazard, Hopkinsville, Lexington, Louisville, Moorhead, Owensboro, Paducah, Prestonburg, and Somerset. There are also a couple satellite offices that you can see there on the screen. Um, the Kentucky, to go back a step, the Kentucky Career Center, so you know exactly what their responsibilities are as far as the state is concerned, is the people that work there, their primary job is to link job seekers of all types. That's a really important um, aspect to keep in mind of all types with career opportunities. They provide personal branding, a really hot topic these days, resume, cover letter, and interviewing skills assistance. They also serve as a social or as a central resource for social services and skills expansion. So when I say social services, I'm talking about if somebody is worried about losing their house, they'll give them access to mortgage assistance and where to go in the state. If they need to apply for SNAP benefits, they'll explain that to people, or TANF benefits. So they have access to those social services that we generally don't. They also have access to local places where people can grow their skills. Um, another big part of their job is they provide access to WIOA, which is the Workforce Investment and Opportunity Act grant. And that is the funding for newly unemployed workers who need to grow their skills. Um, they also organize job fairs with local employers with a heavy emphasis on helping veterans. And by that, I mean if you happen to host a job fair with a Kentucky Career Center, they'll generally host them um, for veterans from, say, 12 to 1. They get to come first, and everybody else from 1 to 4. They always do an extra emphasis on that. Um, they also appeal um, to local employers to post jobs in Kentucky Focus Career, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So in other words, they have staff called workforce development specialists that go out to employers in, our, in the state and um, basically control and do everything they can to post their open positions in the state's job database, not just on Indeed and Monster and Career Builder and places like that. Um, people at the Career Center also assist people with access to Kentucky Focus Career. However, and this is a really big change that occurred in September, the, they no longer provide any type of assistance to people who need to file for unemployment insurance. The most they can do is offer computers for people to get online and apply for it themselves. But anyone who wants to apply for unemployment insurance must either call a call center in Frankfurt to get help, or they're going to have to go online and do it themselves. So that is a huge change, and I firmly believe it's going to have a huge impact on all of us. Because um, we all know everybody comes to the reference desk um, to get help. Um, is anyone familiar with this site, the, the Kentucky Career Center's Focused Career site out there? 
give everybody a quick chance to respond. Okay, I see a few people typing there. <laughs> okay. Okay. You will probably get more familiar about it as time goes on. This is basically the state of Kentucky's career database. Anyone who files for unemployment in the state of Kentucky has to file on this site. What this site does is it walks people through building a resume in the database. So it's going to ask them for all kinds of things about their work background. So, you know, they have to have a phone number, they have to have an email address. They have to have a record of their work experience. They have to have their educational background, their history certifications. So in other words, if someone's going to access this, they have to have everything that they would need normally to sit down and do a resume. This applies to anyone, whether you're a part-time person, a full-time person, an entry-level worker, a skilled worker, whatever, they have to apply on this site. Um, once people do that, they start getting um, emails from the state that will tell them about jobs that are available to them that suit their skills that are in this database. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that you can enter your information into this database even if you're not collecting unemployment. So you or I can create a profile within Kentucky Focus Career. And I encourage you to do that. So if you're regularly working with patrons who need to either file for unemployment, file in this site, if you do it yourself, you'll find out what they're up against in using the site. Um, now, ways that we can help people since they, they're going to be coming to us for help at our reference desk because they can no lo longer get in-person help at the Career Center. Um, you can type up some kind of list for your reference desk to make sure before they sit down to access it that they have the information at their fingertips that they're going to need. That way they're going to avoid a lot of frustration. So they have to have a phone number and they have to have the email address to access it. So for those people that you're working with that don't have an email address, staff have to be trained to be able to help them create one. Everybody has to have one. There's no way out. Um, they do have to have a record of their prior work experiences and dates. We've kind of put together like a little um, form that prompts people, especially entry-level people, to um, to do to have this type of information so they can go out and get it before they sit down at a computer. They also need to note their educational background, whether they have a GED, a high school diploma, a college degree, an advanced degree, and so forth. They can also note any types of certifications, volunteer activities, basically anything that you would actually put on a resume. So it's um, the, the Focus Career site is a big deal. Now, I'll give you all some warning, and hopefully we won't, I won't get yelled at for saying this, but my experience in working with the site, it is not super easy, um, but most of the jobs that are in the database are terrific jobs for people from, for entry level to mid-level positions. Unfortunately, some of the, the, the primary candidates that would find jobs in there do not have the solid computer skills they need to access the site. So that's where we can help with first-time computer user classes or just general information. There are less professional level positions in the database for people that do have the skills to use the site. But I think um, the Kentucky Career Center staff are working very hard, as I mentioned, to improve that situation. As um, I said before, they have workforce development specialists calling on companies and trying to get them to load a lot better jobs. And I know the state is working on making the software more customer friendly. 
Um, so again, train your staff to help people access Kentucky Focus Career. And you can contact someone at the Office of Employment and Training, which is part of the Kentucky Career Center. They will gladly send a staff member out to train your staff if you know, people don't want to do it themselves. So we've done that several times. As a reminder, again, the site must be accessed by people collecting unemployment insurance, but it can be accessed by anyone looking for a job in Kentucky. The site allows the participant to build an internal resume, and the participant will then receive weekly emails about job opportunities that match their skills. Now. Um, here's another question. I don't know um, how many of you are familiar with this site, with ONET, but I consider it my secret weapon. Um, I'm sure many of you cringe when a patron walks up to your desk and asks for help with a resume. <laughs> it's like, oh, the last thing that you want to do. But this site will make it extremely easy for you to help people. If you click on the link, um, and I don't have, um, I'm not going to go out online and do this with you right now, but if you can browse through it at your leisure when you do have time, if you click the link on the left there that says Find Occupations, you basically can type in any job occupation you can think of, including librarian, and you're going to get a list of all the titles commonly associated with that job. So if you put in librarian, you're going to get all kinds of like teacher roles, um, anything you can think of in education, along with either a little bright sun next to it that will tell you um, that there are a lot of jobs in that area. You also might see a little green leaf that will tell you it's a sustainability or green type job, um, which is great. Then you go a step further and you click on whatever title you want, whether it's librarian, teacher, banker, surgeon, and the site opens up and will give you um, a taskbar. I'm going to go to the next slide so I remember this. Um, when you click on the task, you will immediately unmask a series of statements, all in bullet points, describing roles that can be individual, or a series of statements describing roles that can be individualized for resumes. So basically, when you click on the task, it is going to show you all the commonly associated responsibilities with someone fulfilling that role. So it's a great way for people to build the resume because it makes them think about everything they've done. And they can basically pick and choose the statements that apply to them and then fine to them, tune them to their particular position. I encourage all of you, if you haven't updated your resume recently, to go out and try it and look at all the tasks commonly associated with someone in a librarian role to see what's expected of us. Um, it, it reminds you of everything that you do that you might take for granted, um, which is great. You can also encourage people, on depending on um, what they want to do, and of course many people have no clue what they want to do, to pop in a job title of a job that they aspire to, whether it's a manager's role or um, air traffic controller, just about anything you can think of, they click the task list, and again, they can see all the responsibilities commonly associated with that role to see whether or not they have the skills to actually do that job or whether they want to train for it, what they would need to do. You're also going to find lots of information about skills, hot buttons, software commonly used in the role, all kinds of things. So again, it is the Labor Department's website. It is excellent. Um, and if you haven't used it in the past, I encourage you to get um, familiar with it if you can. Um, 
Uh, Natalie, I want to just jump yes. on real quick. Um, sure. Patty, Patty was wondering if you would be able to share your form that you um, that you use to help patrons gather their information before they sit down at the computer. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. And thanks, Patty. What you can do too is if you go to the Kenton County Public Library website. Um, our site is being somewhat updated, but if you click on research and learning up at the top and scroll down to our page called Job Search Central. We have a ton of information on there, um, lots of forms and things that are in PDF form that you can click on, print them out and start using them yourself. So just I was going to tell you that at the end, but since you asked the question, um, you can do that you know, right away. So to review, um, you can train reference staff to access Kentucky Focus Career. Um, give the workforce development specialist closest to you a phone call in their help. If you're a pretty far distance from one of the regional centers, do not fear. They all travel and are willing to go quite a ways out to come help out. Um, you can train reference staff in simple resume te techniques like the basic, basic tenets of Microsoft Word, um, how to upload and save documents to DISC. Um, you can also train staff on how to search key sites like Indeed and ZipRecruiter. They're really not hard once you start doing it and get familiar with them. And the workforce development specialists are happy to, to help people with tips on using them. Um, but like anything else, when people come to the library, they expect us to be the expert. So it's, it's all good to know. Um, you can also partner with Kentucky Career Centers to offer job fairs at your library. Um, you don't have to do anything except supply the space if you have it. They take care of it all. They recruit uh, businesses to come have tables at a job fair. They advertise the job fair, um, whether it's on radio, via their networks, all those kinds of things. You just have to basically supply the space, the tables, the chairs, and they always roll in and do the setup, and they're wonderful about happy, helping us put tables and chairs away when we're done. Um, and it's a great way to increase gate count. We always have a table set up ourselves where we encourage people to get a library card if they don't have one. You know, we hand out calendars and information about what's going on at our library as well. Now. Something you might not have thought about. Um, we, I'm a big fan of the library being the people's university and attracting everyone in for all types of information and in, in education. But if, unfortunately, we've lost a lot of professionals who've become accustomed to getting everything in e-form, um, using electronic books, um, going to Google, um, you know, whatever, but really just not coming back into the physical building. Um, oh, Pam, I just start, saw your note that you said it's embarrassing when no one shows for a job fair. You've, I, sorry you've had that experience. Um, in this day and age now when the job market is tight, we're finding that targeted job fairs tend to work a whole lot better. And um, I was going to talk about this later. But we are also doing hiring events um, with local employers, and that seems to bring a lot of people in too. So, but going back to the professionals, we found that helping people find jobs has been a great way to get them back into the building. Um, one of the things that we've done is to basically establish command of the resources in our area for professional level people. Um, we've taken a look at the, or the basically the college, local colleges and the technical colleges that offer uh, classes and instruction that are approved by the Workforce Investment Act, and we have that available for people. Um, that's important. And so 
you really do need to put together a complete list of local colleges offering workforce investment and Opportunity Act courses. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar at the professional level, these, these can be things as simple as upgrading your computer skills, whether it's in Microsoft Office or whether it's more technical things like getting Six Sigma certification, project management certification, um, SHRM or human resources certification, those types of things. Um, you can also find out about specialty programs available in your area. These are going to be e easier for those of you closer to Lexington and Louisville. For us, we have the University of Cincinnati Back to Business program, um, which basically is a program where a group of professors at UC got together and they collect a check from interested participants of about $500. And they offer a program on, it's about over several weekends, three different Saturdays of the month. And it basically gets people who are re-entering the workforce or have been out of a job for a couple of months back updated on what's going on in the business world. And if the participants attend every session, they get their $500 check back. So it's totally free for them, which is great. You also should have a command of any adult education programs that are available in your area. Some other things that we've done um, to supplement local resources is we found it difficult to get um, lists of all the companies located in our industrial parks. Um, we've gone to our local towns, uh, offices, and asked for lists. And what we've generally gotten are lists by street of every business in the community. So we're getting um, gas stations, hair salons, McDonald's, as well as Toyota, Procter & Gamble, things like that, um, which are very cumbersome and tedious for people to look through. So a couple of us took the time to basically drive through our industrial parks and make lists of every company that we noted had a presence there, whether it was a manufacturing facility, whether it was a sales office, whether it was a distribution center, or whether it was a corporate office. And all we did was type up the name of the company, the address. Um, you know, we came back, and of course, we looked up zip codes and all those kinds of things and phone numbers. And we made lists for people what they found invaluable. So people that are professional level, they know the company has a presence. They can then go to their websites, look up their career site, and look, put in our zip code and look for local jobs. So it turned up a whole lot of companies that people wouldn't normally think of. So it's been a productive experience for us. We also identified industry networking organizations, and we have them noted on our website. Things like um, financial planners organizations, legal organizations, advertising organizations. We have them all listed so people can easily access them. Um, most professionals working today, including us, you know, you tend to work um, in your own little bubble. You know what's going on at your company, and until you're downsized, let's go, let go, whatever, you just don't know a lot of people outside of where you work. These types of groups help introduce people to other professionals at their level in their industry, which are great. Um, you can also find out about support groups for professionals in transition. Um, rather than referring to people as unemployed anymore, everybody talks about professionals in transition basically looking for their next career starting point. Um, we have a number of support groups um, here for that. You can also identify any church job help, help groups can find out about your local Toastmasters or SCORE organizations, um, which are also very helpful to professionals in transition. Another great resource 
can be your chamber of commerce, depending on how active it is and whether they actually are willing to help job seekers or whether they're really only working on the employer's side, but they can be a resource for you as well. Um, some of the things that you can do from the library standpoint, excuse me a moment, I'm just going to take a quick drink of water, hopefully not boring you all to death, um, but you can provide access and training for research databases like Reference USA, Demographics Now, Mergent, or the Foundation Directory. Um, teaching a professional how to develop a list of leads in Reference USA is really easy. Um, and you'll be amazed at the smiles on people's faces when you can pull up lists of all these organizations of various sizes in our area that they have to contact. Some people just run out of steam, and it's a great help to people. Um, there's also a lot of people out there involved in looking for jobs with nonprofits. So teaching people how to use the foundation directory might take you 15 minutes, but you're giving them a skill that'll last a lifetime. That's a big help. Um, you can provide suggested reads of your resume, cover letter, interviewing skills, and job hunting titles. Um, on that website that Charlie noted for you, um, you can easily click on ours and see what we have listed there. Um, and I'll tell you, we used to call them bibliographies, um, kind of to be all inclusive. I changed it to suggested reads because it was impossible. Um, we just didn't have the staff time to keep up something that we wanted to call a true bibliography. So we just say suggested reads so that our necks aren't on the line. And that helps us a lot. Um, we also offer lists of the best recognized professional job search sites. Um, it's another list that you can take right off our Job Search Central site. Um, like on our job search site, we have things like ONET listed, um, Indeed, um, just all those things. And we have them in an organized fashion so people have an idea of what, what are really, truly justified sites and not um, you know, bogus kinds of things. Someone at the professional level isn't going to go out and use snag -a -job to find it to find something. So it's kind of like, they come to you for advice, you give it. We also have done niche job search sites for people in specific industries. Um, we pro provide that information as the library. We also provide salary research sites. So we just found that those were all really helpful and information that people were constantly coming to us and asking about. And if you look at our website, you'll see the way it's organized. Um, Everything we have can be found in a different place. We just put it all on the Job Search Central site so that anyone working at one of our reference desks can quickly go to that page, scroll down to the item, and print it out for somebody, or direct them to the link, so, which is helpful. Um, another thing we do is we heavily promote the use of Gale courses with us, but whether you have Gale courses, universal classes, Learning Express, or Linda. Um, job seekers find those uh, sites extremely helpful. I've had numerous people come to the library after they've been looking for a job for three or four months, and I sit down with them and showing some of the resume classes and LinkedIn classes, that type of thing that are available in Gale courses. And it's always, oh my god, I wish I would have known about this sooner. So those are really, really helpful at the professional level. Um, you should also make a point to know your local business journals and provide access to them. Um, for us, it's the Cincinnati Business Courier. They, have, uh, they publish a book of lists that break down all kinds of industries by companies in your area, whether it's a list of the top 50 uh, largest privately held companies or the top 100 manufacturing companies, you can um, 
you know, offer to let people make copies of those. Um, but that's, it's great to offer that assistance to them. Now you may wonder, how did we do all of this? Um, how did we get to this point? So I talk about, I consider it connective intelligence. Um, it's kind of my, my term for it. So I was able to make connections with the workforce development specialist at our career centers, and they've become friends. Um, they have taught resume classes at our branches, internet searching classes for us, interviewing skills classes, all for free, which has been wonderful. Um, so that's something you can do. And we try very hard not to duplicate the efforts of what's going on at the Kentucky Career Center with our workforce development specialists. We try and supplement what they're doing. Um, and they, in turn, um, kind of promote everything that we're doing at the library. So it's a great partnership. You can also identify professional career coaches in your area. These are the people that will sit down with a professional and help them write their resume um, for a fee, um, or helping them with coaching experience, or interviewing skills, any of that. They'll be happy to help you. Um, they'll often provide their services for free if you want them to teach a class for you or offer resume assistance because it gives them exposure. Um, you can also advocate for your community partners programs. Um, we do that here and they promote ours. Um, we try very hard to communicate effectively with all our partners and resources. Um, local partners that we work for are first and foremost the Northern Kentucky Career Center, but as I mentioned, also our Chamber of Commerce. Um, we work with our local colleges and universities. We work with our local workforce investment board. Um, we have another, a number of other social services organizations that we also work with. Um, and we have them all listed on our website. So we provide access to them from the library, which is great. Um, and as I mentioned, you can establish a Job Search Central website of community resources like we did. Um, now, I, I'm sure not everyone has the opportunity to do this, but something else that I've done was est establish a professional networking group that meets at the library. Um, ours is called the Northern Kentucky Accountability Group. And it's basically all professionals in transition that come to our, the Erlinger Library on Wednesday mornings. And it's basically every Wednesday morning from 9.15. And how we tee it up is um, it's basically a round table discussion of the status of everyone's job search. And while people are there, I always talk about that we are the library, so we have a command of local resources. So as people are talking, we kind of direct them based on where they need, uh, where their needs are, to where they they can get the information or access to opportunities. Um, and this has been extremely um, fruitful for us. We have about anywhere from 25 to 30 people coming every week um, and getting new library cards all the time and getting reintroduced to library resources. Um, I wanted to touch briefly, because I know it's already quarter to um, three, on something that we have done when I mentioned contacting workforce development specialists at the Career Center are talking with professional level coaches. Um, we started offering classes, um, basically that there's no programming fee involved because I've reached out to these professionals who are getting exposure by teaching the classes for us. And we do have some of our own staff teaching them as well. But to give you an idea of some of the things that we've offered, we do effective job search techniques. Um, we do a target your resume workshop. We do an interviewing skills workshop. And um, depending on your HR staff, 
we have three wonderful um, HR professionals on our team, and two of them give interviewing skills workshops for us where they love to just sit and talk about um, what people need to bring to an interview and how to practice and prepare. prepare. Costs us nothing to do that. Um, the one class we have paid for is a LinkedIn profile series, which is critical for professionals. Um, we've offered a class on networking, on Twitter, on online security for the job seeker, and taking an employer assessment. All kinds of things we've done. Um, some of the things that I've done myself are using Reference USA in your job search, how to improve your skills through Gale courses, and how to understand applicant tracking software, also referred to as ATS. Um, and then there, there's a few other things there, like writing the thank you note, telling, telling people about yourself, those kinds of things. So those are all things that we do basically in the networking group. So um, that's it. That's kind of uh, where we are right now. I know that's like a lot of information, and not everybody um, can do all that. Um, but if, if there is any questions out there, I'd be happy to answer them. Just going to give it a minute here. And if not, we'll let it go. I was also asked a question myself the other day. Or I was wondering if it was important as a librarian to kind of establish career credentials ourselves. Um, and I was told, no way, we're the library. Everybody thinks you're, we're smart, which I thought was really kind of a fun thing to hear. So it was cute. What I've done um, basically with people uh, that are coming in on the professional level is we basically take the tactic that you can feel sorry for yourself or imagine where you need to go and get there. And of course, we're the library, so we're always encourage peop encouraging people to imagine themselves being the best they can be and offering book talks and all kinds of information for them. So. Um, Sharon, I'm just reading your question off in the staff. Uh, that's tough. You said the workforce development, they send people with the expectation that you will do everything for them. That is tough, and that is getting to be a bigger worry. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, the Spanning the Gap program, but that is going into effect up here in January in our area. And basically how that is going to work is anyone who is connecting SNAP or food stamps or is getting any type of TANF, which is um, transitional assistance for needy families, is going to need to work um, 20 hours per week or volunteer 20 hours a week or be in some type of job training. So people at the Career Center are pretty much going to be overwhelmed um, managing all of that. And I think things are going to get worse for us as far as the expectation of people, of us helping people rather than better. Reading here. Good. <laughs> um, glad to hear that some of you are moving along with all the with the resources. So I think we're going to be continuing to all of us continuing to be able to help with those. Um, if you're not familiar with Governor Gevin's program, it's um, HelpWantedKentucky.com. That's a program where anyone who has a GED our high school diploma, but no further education yet. If they choose to major in some type of advanced manufacturing area at one of the local community and technical colleges, the state will pay their tuition for free for two years, and they graduate with a great job. So that's another thing that we're going to be called on to be pushing and talking about a lot. Um, let me see if I can see any other questions. 
Yes, the SNAP stuff, that's huge. Um, if you visit your local Kentucky Career Center, all of them should have information on it by now. Um, and you can find out how it's going to work in your community. Up here, it's being rolled out by various counties. Um, and we only have one county that is rolling out so far. But I've heard it's going to affect about 2,000 people total. So OK. Anything else? OK. Charlie, I think we're all set. OK, Natalie, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to change the screen just a little bit. We're going to move into our final slides here. As I kind of wrap things up, please go ahead and chat in any final questions that you have for Natalie. Uh, just let me, whoops, sorry about that. That's my fault. <laughs> OK. Uh, my fault there. Um, Let's see. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. Wanted to give a plug to uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Services for partially sponsoring this webinar today. Big thanks to them, as always. Reminder for um, us uh, follow KDLA on social media. And I did want to just sort of advertise a couple of webinars that KDLA has coming up in the next few weeks. The big one is uh, the fourth fourth one down there on that list is an updated version of our certification webinar with the changes that happened, we are going to be doing an updated webinar that will have information on the on the changes. And those will be coming up, oh, and it says November 25th. It's actually October 25th and October 26th. <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> Let me just go on to the next slide. We'll ignore that. <laughs> so, but you all can check the, the uh, CE events calendar for the correct dates on those. Um, and. I'm not seeing any more questions come in, so I want to give a big, big thank you to Natalie for giving us some more of her time uh, for repeating this presentation. I know KPLA is always crazy, and you can't get to all the sessions you want to get to, so it's great to be able to repeat some of these that are really, really valuable, like this one. Um, so hmm. thank you again, Natalie. Thanks for having me, Charlie. Great to be here. Thanks, everybody, and, and feel please feel free to reach out. Yes, we do have her email and phone number there. I'm sure she'd be happy to help any questions that you have that you think of after the session is over. Um, remember that this was recorded, and so you'll be able to review it uh, at your leisure or share it with your coworkers. And I'll be sending out your certificate of attendance within the next week. All right, so whenever okay. you're ready, just click the X in the top right-hand corner to exit. Thank you all again, and thank you once again, Natalie. OK, thanks, Charlie. You have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.